Tai Coos from Chucky and Wash here. Today we're here with the death in the family. We're doing part one of our interview with the band. How you going guys? Thanks Coops. Going very well. Now earlier this year, fans of the band were sad to hear that you guys had decided to call it a day. How's that come about and any reasons behind it? Um, well, I guess it came about we were uh, we're in the studio, we hired a rehearsal studio for two weeks uh, to record and to write um, and that was kind of pretty, well, we found it kind of a really hard time to kind of uh, come up with the songs and kind of, kind of felt like we were kind of tr trying to make something happen that kind of wasn't really happening yeah. and a lot of pressure on ourselves and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it kind of took its toll on everyone. It's a different way. Yeah, yeah. And we, we sat down and decided that while we're all still mates, that's like the best times. We did a whole bunch of shit that we never thought we would get to do yeah. as a band and as musicians. And yeah, uh, I just think once once uh, we started opening up the discussion of like, oh, maybe you know, instead of being that band where you play you play once a year or you play you tour once a year. You know, I think we were all kind of like, we're either doing it or we're not doing it. And if it gets too tricky and everyone's, you know, hasn't got the time and we can't get a new record together, then you know, let, let's kind of quit while we're ahead and yeah. you know, call it a good time and while we're all still mates. And and, and all that's really important. The first two records, we were so lucky to be able to, you know, have like a constant stream of shows and then do the overseas touring. Yeah. That was like that. I guess that was kind of the standard we'd set for ourselves and you know, if, if we did the third record, I guess Matt had already said that he and Mel were pretty keen to look for a new venue and that he couldn't really promise any overseas touring to follow up that record and um, yeah, so it was just it was just life really and you know, getting old and, yeah, 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 that's right. And not not that we you know, like Jamie obviously still does his solo stuff, and not that well, anyone. Things going on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not that anyone wants to hang up their instruments as such, but um, I just think, yeah, that band was kind of that band for that period, and and there's kind of no use pushing shit uphill to to keep it rolling on if it, if it stops being fun or it starts being hard work. Yeah. yeah. I think that you know some bands like they have two records and a few other releases in them and. That's that's kind of their body of work. Other bands can spit out a record every year for eight years, and and that's you know um, we never really had a set songwriting formula. Like our songs were quite like sort of start at one point, end at another point. It was quite elaborate um, the, the way we get to one point to the other. So um, I guess that makes it harder to keep spitting out spitting out music. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought that was a, that was a really good point that you know some bands that's that's kind of their body of work and and you know everything kind of gets poured into those few releases and other bands kind of just keep spinning out stuff and, and, and they uh, can do so, it yeah great. that's right yeah. and you know some records might be good some not so good but yeah you know, hopefully what we did we can kind of hang our hats on and say like we were happy with the stuff that we got recorded. Yeah. Now, why most of your fans are in Australia and they know you work quite well from here? You've been overseas a few times, which people might not know that much about. You guys have kindly shared with us a lot of footage from a couple of tours you've done. And this week, we're going to have a look at the stuff from the United States. Would you like to tell us a bit about that trip? Yeah, um, the first time we went to the States, we played the fest in uh, Gainesville, Florida, and we toured the South um, a little bit with. Gaslight Anthem, Dead to Me, The Draft, uh, and um, yeah, that was it was a good time. I nearly didn't get into the States on the way in. Um, I was detained for about six hours, <laughs> and finally got in um, and uh, met up with guys in Florida, and it was a uh, yeah, it was a really fun time. I actually kind of uh, hadn't had a real burning desire to go to the States before. But um, I, I loved it. I loved it. South, of course. Yeah, we got, we got looked after really well, and uh, yeah, I think that's the same with any of those sort of smaller DIY tours. It's you get to meet a bunch of good people, and you know, we we really went on a little bit of a whim. We had 
had an offer to play the fest and then we had this week of shows with um, that Jason from the draft hooked up for us and everything else was kind of filling in the gaps. Steady state. We, we did some shows in all sorts of venues, under houses, in basements, in, you know, you name it, we kind of played it. And then, you know, the, the week of shows with, with the draft and Gaslight Anthem was really cool. It's good, proper small venues and that led up to the fest, which was just amazing time and, yeah, something we never thought we'd get an opportunity to do and let alone on that, that lineup that year was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah the fest any year. Yeah, 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 so quite so good. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, a good percentage of rad bands. So, um, yeah, yeah. we had no, no expectations, and yeah, it was, it was an amazing time. Second time back, not so lucky. Not so lucky. <laughs> at least I wasn't waiting there this time. I was, yeah. I was waiting at home, but um, yeah, it didn't, didn't, uh, no guys on the on the second time in the states. Not went for a visa. Trying. Just, uh, just didn't come, come through time. Um, but luckily we had uh, the legend Adrian Lombardi at the helm. Young man. He is, he is, and he learnt uh, songs in about a week. Yeah, we got some footage of that that you can probably be looking at right now. Yep, yep, yeah. Lombi shredded up in my absence. Yeah, it was, um, yeah. I, I think we played, we must have played at the Annandale in Sydney, I think the week before the tour, the second time round, and that had been booked for so long. and. Jamie this time around had done like all the paperwork that he thought he was supposed to do and so you know it was sort of getting down to the wire and we're like oh I wonder if wonder if this is all going to happen and uh, I remember sitting on the rooftop at Nelson from Lungs we're staying at his house it was a week out from the tour and just going to I think Jamie might not be going uh, and and yeah when we got back on the Monday we're like we should because Adrian had already booked the flight yeah, and he, he was going to come along and just sell t-shirts and I think he, in his words he was going to sell t-shirts and talk to ladies for a month. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> That's what he said. Um, so he went from doing that to uh, playing guitar and yeah. <laughs> forever grateful to the Lombardi for, for uh, stepping up there. Yeah. yeah, and that tour was, I guess it was, you know, it was at the point where Gaslight Anthem were starting to get really big and they were you know, we were getting regular email updates on that tour. They were sort of upgrading the venues as we were going along, and I guess for us, we, were, you know, compared to the first time we were there, which was a little bit pieced together, this was a pretty serious tour. And uh, so, you know, Jamie was cool with us continuing on without him, and it was, yeah, that was a really, really big tour, and uh, it went really well. This has been part one of our interview with the Desmond family. Tune in next week to see the guys talking about touring Europe, the art house and their final show. Make sure you come back and check it out.